Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panjasu and this is a tutorial video for Dungeon of the Endless. And to be more precise, what I am going to discuss in this video are the beginnings of your journey inside the dungeon and the current metagame of this particular title. Now, who this video is directed to? Not extremely new players who have no idea what this game is. If you are such a person, I encourage you to check out my other video of the game where I introduce you to base mechanics or anybody else's video really. Or if you have the game then just play it at least 110 so you can get what I'm going to talk about. Because I will not talk about the basics, I will talk about things that people who know a little bit about the game will understand but probably nobody else. Now, what in particular do I want to discuss? A strategy for starting a new game, because in the current meta game things have changed quite drastically, and you may need to adapt your strategies. I certainly had to adapt mine, and besides, it has been a while since I put out a Dungeon of the Endless tutorial, so I thought to myself, why not do it now? Things are probably going to stabilize for quite some time, possibly even until the multiplayer update and even for further in the future. So, when you start a new game, let us assume that you are a new player and that you only have access to three heroes. And the starting heroes are, as it goes, Opibot, Saranumas, and uh, where. Uh, there we go, and Max O'Kane. Now, those are the starting three heroes. If you have played the game for a little bit longer, you may have access to different heroes as well, which I kinda expect you to because this is a highly addicting game that we are playing right now. But I'm going to assume that you are a new player, you know what is going on, but you are new, you possibly didn't unlock anybody yet, so you only can choose one of those three heroes. In this situation, who do you want to choose? Well, as you can see just by the game stats, I did a lot of experimenting on this particular save because you can actually have multiple saves. I'll talk about this in the future. But anyway, yes, I did a lot of testing and as such, I figured out um, the particular build that I believe to be the best starting build. So let's talk about the free static heroes first. First things first, we've got the OP bot, who is really the shining star of all the heroes that you can have in this game. He's really reliable and really good, and he doesn't consume too much food either. Because, as it turns out, in my opinion, you need to level hit this hero up only until level 7, arguably level 8. After that, there is little to, little to no point of leveling him up because he gains fairly weak bonuses to his skills and very small increasements. La, increasements? What? And his stats do not increase by a lot, pardon me right there. So in general, he's still really good. Not the best late game, but he's still going to carry a fourth. And the most important thing, he can get Operate Ability early. Now just to remind you, Operate Ability does allow you to operate major modules. And after the mm, fairly recent change, you have to stay in a room for at least one turn in order to operate a module and also the Operate Ability is now way more uncommon. There are only a handful of heroes that actually have the upgrade ability and even less heroes that actually gain this ability on level 3. Opibot is one of such heroes. With him you can start increasing the amount of food, industry or science that you are gaining much faster than with any other hero. So I personally cannot imagine really starting a game without Opibot unless you're just trying to have fun experimenting or going for random heroes. If that's the case then sure, you don't have to go for OPBOT, but if you are trying to land the game, or if you are trying to win the game, OPBOT, in my opinion, is the best bet you can go for, and I will in fact use this hero for this tutorial, and I'll show you why I believe he's so effing good. Next hero on the list is going to be Sarah Numas. She hasn't changed too much over the past few months, in fact, she hasn't really changed at all. She's still a very speedy hero, however, her importance has decreased, unfortunately, because of the addition of other heroes. Yes, she is still by far the fastest hero in the game, and she's amazing when it comes down to carrying a crystal from the beginning location till the exit of the current floor of the dungeon. But unfortunately, this is where she ends. She doesn't have a lot of damage, her life is quite pathetically low, she cannot operate major modules, and uh, she doesn't have much going for her. She used to be a very good door opener in the past, but right now there are other heroes that are way better door openers, including a hero 
that we're going to talk about in a second. So unfortunately her importance has decreased by quite a bit and I can't recommend her to anybody else but very experienced players or people who just, as I said, are looking for some random fun. Now the third player that you are certainly going to have because everybody does is Max O'Kane. Max O'Kane is a really good hero and he can be used in pretty much every way possible. I remember back in the old days of, uh, days of the Alpha when I absolutely really hated him almost because he was so useless. Now he certainly is everything but useless. He's got a really nice combination of stats, fairly... I, I guess we could call him Jack of all trades and that's what he is except he's a really good Jack of those trades, he really is. So just to talk you through him, what is the ability that he starts with? He starts with the ability to give you extra science each time you open door. That's a plus one bonus to science all the time as long as this guy is alive, which is huge. And after you level him up until level um, 10? I don't remember, maybe more. Either way, after you level him up quite a bit, you can increase that science gain, that passive science gain, up to plus two. So without even building any modules, at some point in the game, you can gain plus four science for doing nothing. And even earlier in the game, plus three science is actually fairly substantial and allows you to skip those science modules which you may not want to spend your industry creating, or maybe precious major module slots which you may not have a lot of. So that, for this very reason, Max O'Kenny is already very good, but it gets better. It gets better because he also has another ability, passive ability, that he gains fairly quickly as well, which allows, which increases the amount of dust he gains after he opens doors, when there is dust in the doors that, uh, in the room that he opens the door to. So let's say that I open a new room and there is dust in this room that you would give me plus four dust. With this hero, if this hero opens the door, he gives me extra two dust in addition to the dust that I would otherwise get. So. If I was supposed to gain plus 4, I'm gonna get plus 6, which can be really helpful. And this ability can actually be leveled up twice, if I remember correctly, so it, he, this bonus can get quite significant. So he's an amazing door opener. He does have uh, also the ability to operate your modules, which he gains a level 4, so one level later than a bot, but he can still operate those modules. And additionally, he's got quite a fairly decent firepower. I mean, he doesn't start with a huge amount of damage, but it, his increase of damage is actually fairly good, especially for the uh, guard type of hero, because, you know, heroes are classified into three different types. There are prisoners, there are guards, and there are Ariga natives. Prisoners have generally better damage, but less defense, at least certainly in the later levels. Guards the other way around, although it's uh, balanced a little bit differently. And Auriga natives are really weak early on, but they are really powerful later on. Now, this hero is a guard, but despite being a guard, he also can pack a lot of damage. So, the only problem and downside to Max O'Kane is that he can, in fact, fulfill too many roles. Because he can operate. That's a really good ability. Problem is, with this hero, you do not want to operate anything because he's an amazing door opener. So you want to have this hero only when you have a different hero that you want to operate modules with. Now, because of this, the combination that I was sometimes thinking about of Max O'Kane and Saranumas is really a no-go, because frankly you'd have to operate modules with Max O'Kane and open those with Saranumas, and while she is a good door opener because of her speed, Max O'Kane can give you more dust. Now if you look at this combination, OP Bot and Max O'Kane, it's much better. It is a very greedy combination, unfortunately, but it is still very good because you will operate your modules with OP Bot for incredible food industry and science gain. You gain even more science because of Max O'Kane, and you also gain a lot of dust because of Max O'Kane. He is also relatively fast, not as fast as Sarah, but still fairly fast. So again, an amazing door opener. As for the LS combination, you may be compelled to check the OP Bot plus Sarnubas. Uh, I cannot really defend it in any way, shape or form. It's just in every way worse than combination with Max O'Kane. Sure, Sarah is faster than Max O'Kane, but in early game it doesn't matter too much and it is early game that this video cast is all about. So I cannot recommend this. If you only have those three heroes unlocked, this is the best combination and in fact, I think this is the only logical combination to, for you to go for. However, what if you have more heroes unlocked? Let's assume that you have everybody unlocked. Now, I do not, in this particular save, have every hero unlocked, as you can see those heroes... Hey, I met those guys! Uh, that's very strange. 
I seriously met this guy. Ah, uh, doesn't really matter. I guess... Oh, I know what it is. I'm playing on a different save than the one I should be using. I'll talk about this in a second. Either way, yeah, those heroes I have actually met. But either way, if you have all of those heroes unlocked, you may be thinking, which hero is the best? Well, for that purpose, I will tell you that it is quite simply, in my opinion, this combination. Now, I have a reason for this. First things first, with OP bot, you can gain, as I said, an insane food industry and science bonus no matter what which is fairly crucial and can help you out a lot and i'll show you exactly by how much after we actually start playing the game however the best hero to accompany this guy is in my opinion ken mosaki now this guy is really good early game but fairly bad late game reason being this guy is gains significant bonuses when he's alone in a room as in alone there are no other helpful heroes with him there are only enemy mobs in this situation, his strength can increase by quite drastically, and he doesn't gain those bonuses, or at least they're not as big of a bonus, when he is actually in a room with some friendly heroes. Because of this, he's actually really good in late early game, because there you will probably only have two heroes for quite some time, unless you're really lucky, in which case more power to you. But if you are more like the average player, you're probably not going to get a second hero until level 2, or maybe even level 3 if you're really unlucky. And then Kenemosaki is your best bet. That's because he is a powerhouse and a beast when it comes to dealing with mobs in earlier floors. You just need to level him up a little bit and he gains a very powerful active and passive ability that increases his power when he's alone in a room with monsters. And then he will just paint the floor with blood of his defeated opponents. He's an amazing uh, companion to Opibot because Opibot is an amazing operator but he's very weak, he doesn't deal a lot of damage, he does have some life and some speed, but speed you don't want to use because you want him to stay in a room, and life, it seems like he's got a lot of it, but he actually dies fairly quickly if you let him, and his damage is pathetic. So you need somebody powerful to tank the damage for you, and Ken Mosaki, in my opinion, is the best for this situation. He's a good dope opener, because no matter what surprises him in the dark, he's always probably going to be able to kill that in earlier flaws, and he's a really good defender as well, for the pretty much same reason. Other hero combinations that you may think about, well, I could discuss this, but this video would be way too long for that, and let's just... I've been thinking a lot about this, okay, and in my opinion, Kamosaki is the best. I have been thinking about somebody else, like for example, Gog, but he's a really... He's a very bad doper because of his speed, and as such, you don't want him. So he goes for uh, Tro. Unfortunately, I really need to switch my save before we continue because I cannot show it to you, but it doesn't matter He's very slow as well, so you don't want him as a door opener and so on and so forth One person that I would possibly Consider being okay playing with OP bot that not quite as good as Ken Mosaki in my opinion, but are still fairly good is the demolitionist she is fairly good because she has generally the abilities to benefit all heroes that she is with. So if you need to defend a major module that is being operated by a bot then you can do it with her. But she's still not as good early, early flaws as Ken Mosaki, no way in my opinion. So you should really go for those two guys. Now I'm not going to hit confirm because I do want to switch my save file to a the one that I use for playing and not for testing. So I'll be right back and after I am in uh, after I'm back then you will already be in the game with the combination I spoke of. Actually no, we will not be using the combination I spoke of because you may not have Kenemosaki. I'll be using Max OK and plus OP bot. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Alright, as you can see, we have just loaded in the game and I am now using my correct save file, which again I'll tell you exactly how to swap out your save files at the end of this video guys because right now i want to focus on the gameplay if you don't mind so this is how we're going to start well no so far so good nothing is going to be changing at all until we open the first door so let us do just that and discover our very first room now so far so okay we have found our first major module from what i can tell you always get this first major module it just it's impossible not to get it i'm fairly certain maybe it is but i have never ever seen the first room to not have a major module now what do you want to put inside this room always go for the industry generator always now there is a very good reason for it now in the past you used to be only able to gain free food science and industry no two food science and industry 
uh, base from your crystal just existing. Now this has increased to plus three, so it's less important to actually start producing industry than it was before, because before it al allowed you to make a second module right away, whereas without this industry module you would not be able to do that. However, things are different now, so it's not tech speaking necessary, but for the reasons I'll explain later, it actually is necessary and you should go for industry module first. And I'll obviously explain this in detail as we go on, because right now I need to explain it on some more examples. So let's open the next door. Now ideally it is going to have a major module inside of it and it does. So, so far so good, we are fairly lucky, although to be entirely honest, on the first floor it is very likely that the first three rooms you will find will have a major module with it. That's why my build, build usually works. Now what do you want to do with your second module? That's where you put down the food replicator. Now with this food replicator you can gain quite a bit of bonus food. Well, I know I'm speaking, I'm saying something obvious right now, but this is actually fairly crucial because it will allow you to level up or pivot fairly, fairly fast. I mean, I'll wait right now because you never know, something might happen, we might need this food, but I mean, it's unlucky that anything will happen, so I just level him up. And as you can see, now I need 15 more food. When I have 15 move, um, food, I'll have my second passive skill, which is when I'll be able to start operating my major modules. So let's go ahead and continue exploring the door, door dungeon. What do we see now? Another major module, as I said, it is very likely that you find those. I'll talk about uh, what happens if you don't in a second. So I'll find a major module. What do you want to do now? Well, first things first, you want to level up or people, oh, sorry, it's not here yet. We need to wait until uh, next door. But what do you want to do now? Uh, now it varies what you do, but in my opinion, you should go for, all right. I completely forgot, sorry. I got thrown a little bit of balance. Uh, when you open the third door, you need to wait for a second because you will now have just barely not enough industry and not enough food to actually do anything. But because you went for this particular bit of industry first and food second, you will be able to do both. Create a new major module and level up people to level three after you open the next door, which is actually fairly important. I've been testing this for hours, maybe like more like one hour, I'll be honest. Still, I've been testing it a lot. And this is the most efficient way of leveling up your heroes and also getting enough major modules at the same time. If you change this build order around, you will not be able to do those things as quickly as you can do them right now. You really need to have your uh, industry module first, otherwise you will just not have enough industry to go for a new module when you open the fourth door. At least that was, uh, that's how it was in the past. I'm not sure if this extra industry gain now from the crystal changed it, but I'm pretty sure it is actually still the case. Even if it's not, then it can still make your next industry module faster in the next, after you open the next door. So for example, door five, you can have something else extra, whereas usually you wouldn't be able to get it. And it's really, really important that you balance out your food and industry gain over the first few doors. Now, we have opened the fourth door. What does it mean? It means that we can level up a pivot for next level. Now he can actually operate major modules. So what do we want to do? We want to put down a major module. Now, there are two kinds of people. One kind of people says, that, hey, I want to have food because it is very important to level up your heroes and to give them extra abilities and they are the main damage source of uh, my defenses. Fair point, I say to those people, but I'm the second kind and you need this industry, especially on the first floor. Basically what I'm trying to do every time I play this game and it has worked for me every single time so far is build up a very nice stack of industry early on because on the very first, uh, on in mid game, to be more precise, you rely on your power on your modules to defend your dungeon rather than your heroes because your heroes will be in this really awkward transition spot when they are either not good or not bad enough if you know what i'm trying to say and then you actually need to use mo your modules quite extensively and you also need to start building up your bank of industry because later on you want to switch into food production head on heavy because you will need your heroes to be on a max level before you venture to the last two floors and by then you don't want to, f f you know, bother with industry modules at all, if at all possible. Also on the very first floor, you may sometimes, or the second floor as well, you may sometimes need to have some extra defenses. And, then and when that happens, this extra industry will really come in handy. So because we have the industry for it, we are going to plunk down another industry generator. 
Now, where do we put our pivot? Well, obviously what I said might make you think that I want to actually operate the industry so I can, starting on the next uh, 10, gain a lot more industry from this module. Well, no. As much as industry is important, food is also very important. And by doing the things the way I just did it, I will gain a steady supply of uh, industry. As you can see, 9 per 10 is nothing to sniff at. And I will also gain a very, very nice sorry, supply of food every door, which is also very important. Now, I was lucky enough to actually find myself an artifact. I'll give it to Max O'Kane to make him even better door opener than before. And I'll go ahead and open this door. Uh, there's pretty much no way of uh, enemy mobs being able to kill Max O'Kane when there is only one room of mobs that can spawn at any given time. So if I open a new room and there's power in the room before it, Max O'Kane can deal with those mobs even when he's on level 1. If we cannot, then it means that he's fighting mobs that are specifically designed to hunt down your heroes. So if you see that Max O'Kane is actually losing, what you do is you pull back to where OP bot is and you find mobs in two. Don't worry about this module, because the only mobs that can possibly kill Max O'Kane on the first floor from a single room are the kind of mobs that ignore major modules. So there's no need for you to worry about that. So there is that, and so far, fairly Sla lucky slash unlucky in terms of our dust gain. We were able to gain 47 dust early on, which is nice. I am powering quite a few rooms with it, but I will not be able to power up this room, which would be really good. But look at where we are right now. We have only opened 5 doors, and we are gaining 9 industry, 4 science, and 11 food per 10, which is a fairly substantial amount, and no matter how much I have tested, I could not possibly gain a better balance at any given time. It's possible that if you were to, for example, just focus on one of those things, then maybe somehow you are able to gain more of that, but it is a very balanced option, and it gives you a lot of everything, and in all honesty, I was not able to discover a better build. I simply was not. 9 industries, 11 food is nothing to sniff at. 4 science is also really good, and that is simply as a result of us having Max or Ken. This is why I call this combination a very greedy combination. Those two heroes, they are actually fairly fragile, both. So you will need a tank sooner or later, and you are relying on the RNG to give you this tank. This is why I usually prefer to have the Ken Maskin, or whatever his name is, the Masochist, to have with me. But despite uh, not having him, this combination can also work really well. But you are relying a little bit more on luck because you will need to find a tank, and if you don't, then you'll probably lose. Still, though, if you do find a tank, then this combination is the best combination you can possibly have. Without it, you have less dust and one less science, but obviously with uh, our people still being there, you will still have 9 industry gain and 11 food gain. So that's the pretty much most important thing. Now, what do you do in those rooms? This is something I explained in one of my tutorials, but we might as well talk about this again because this was fairly far into those tutorial series I did in the past, and they were really outdated as well. So I'll continue playing until at least the end of this floor, maybe a bit longer, we'll see about that, and talk a bit through my decision making. So right now, three doors are available. You should probably by now know what to do because it's fairly simple, in fact. You want to open this door. Why? Because the route between this door and the next door is very long, so the uh, mobs will have to travel a very long way between one point and the other. Now, right now it doesn't matter because we don't have enough power to power up this room and put any defenses inside of it, but later on we might, and when that happens you want to have mobs only coming from this door, if at all possible. So let's go ahead and open it. And good, it is not a dead end. Are there any mobs in here? No. Are there any mobs going to spawn? No, we are so far fairly lucky. But this is where things go a little bit dicey, because if they do spawn, then two heroes will not be possibly able to kill them both, especially if Max O'Kane only has this many levels. Now, I can save my food to level up a B-Bot, which I'm not going to do right now. I could... Oh, actually, again, the Nail Gun. Then even know that, which is good, it means that Max O'Kane, even level 1, is actually possibly going to be able to handle quite a lot of mobs because of the amount of items he's got. Now, I could level him up and give him the passive skill, which is Verbal Abuse, which, um, if I remember correctly, it makes mobs weaker against heroes, which would help us and make Max O'Kane a little bit safer, but because he is a fairly speedy hero, if I find too much resistance, I'm going to run back to OP bot and I'll put some defenses in those two rooms to make sure that my rooms are relatively well covered. 
So let's go ahead and continue opening those. We are looking for more dust and we just gained it in space, which is very nice. I can now power this room and this is going to be my, my main hub. As you can see, there are three doors leading away from this room and after this room, there's only one path the mobs can take to actually reach my crystal. So by all means, no matter what happens, they all mobs will have to pass through this room. And I'll also have to pass through this room if I want to deliver the crystal to the exit. This makes this room a very important hub for me where I want to kill the mobs, or at least weaken them before they proceed any further. And this will also be a very nice defensive location for me when I do want to eventually venture out to later floors. So what do I want to do in this situation? Put down some prison pods. It's not worth it, trust me, to actually not put them down. Uh, you do want to keep an eye out on how much those modules cost. So right now they cost 19. So I have to remember that I can only spend 8 on those prison pods. So I'm only going to build 2 as a direct result. And I will not create a third one. But it is all pretty much always a good idea to create those prison pods. Reason being is that sometimes you may overestimate your hero's ability to kill mobs and when that happens you possibly be forced to use food to heal him up which is the worst thing that can possibly happen to you in early game in early game you need to stockpile this food really badly so when you are really in a bad spot you can use this food or alternatively you can use it for something else like hiring a new hero or leveling up your heroes but right now i do not want to level up my hero but i do have a lot of items on max okay so he's fairly beastly I do have two prisoner prods which are doing just fine and I do not think there is any need for me to level him up. I would much rather keep this food because if I meet a very powerful hero that costs a lot of food to recruit, because yes there are heroes that cost 30 food to recruit, then I will need all this food to actually be able to afford him. And you never want to meet a hero when you have no food and no way of making food because then you will just hate yourself and your life. Now what kind of module do you want to create over here? Now usually Without Moxicane, you might actually have to think about creating Science Generator. Science has actually been buffed in the recent patch. It is more useful. You can use it to actually uh, restore your abilities. Now, what do I mean by restore? It means that if I activate this ability, then I'll have to wait three doors. I'll have to open three doors in order to activate this ability again. But if I use the restore ability, it will instantly be activatable again, even right away after using the restore ability. So I can use this skill several times during one single uh, mob spawn event, which is fairly substantial. Of course, it does cost quite a bit of size. It costs less size if you are closer to fully charging this ability. So let's say I have one door of cooldown left on this ability, then it will be fairly cheap to restore this ability. And if I have more cooldown left, then it will be more expensive, obviously. So science is fairly important right now, way more so than in the past, which actually makes me glad, because in the past, science was pretty much a joke. And because of this, without Max Arcane, this might be a good point for you to create a science generator, so you have the science input and you will be able to afford to both restore your abilities and also purchase improvements to your dungeon defenses, which is also very important. But with Max O'Kane, as you can see, gaining 4 dust per turn, I already accumulated a nice bank of 37 science, which is enough to buy out most of basic upgrades, not enough to get some other things like shop, for example, which costs 50 science, which is a ton. But there are not too many things like shop that cost this much science, so I'm content with my science, and instead what I'm going to do is create either a sign, an industry generator or a food replicator. And because I do not have a lot of uh, doors to open on the first floor, it is fairly risky and possible that I will not be able to make up for the amount of dust uh, industry I have to spend on industry generator. Because, let's just put it this way, it costs 19 industry and it gives me free industry per door opened. So I will need to open 7 doors for it to pay off and give me some kind of benefit. That's a lot of doors and I'll not be able to open those, most likely. So it's a waste to create an industry generator, you will not gain anything from it. But you can create a food replicator, in fact, I'd advise you to do just that. You do need, as I said, a stable income of industry on the early floors, but this is why those two things are made so quickly. Because now you don't have to worry about this and you will gain a, a decent amount of industry. And you don't really need more than that on early floors, because prisoner pros are really good and efficient against some of those earlier mobs. And you don't need to spam them too much, you just need a few of them and you'll be good. Now, that said, let's go ahead and continue exploring. I really hope we can find a new hero or merchant, but our luck has been fairly decent up to this point, so I think there's no point in me begging for this to happen. We found the exit no mob spawned, which is kind of substantial and makes me a little bit worried, because 
I am expecting a huge mob spawn event anytime now when three mobs will spawn in those rooms and there will be mobs behind this door as well. But maybe this will not happen. Now, I maybe need to answer the question, why am I not opening those doors? It's very simple. The worst thing you want, the last thing you want is for the doors, uh, for the mobs to actually cluster up. Because if there are two mobs, uh, two mobs that spawns, one over here and one over here, they will move into this room one by one and it will be easier for uh, me to dispatch them, taking less damage in the process. If there are mobs that spawn in this room and this room for example, and they both enter this door, uh, this room at the same time, they will be way more efficient, they will work together and I will take more damage and I will not be able to eliminate them as efficiently. So in general, it is always a good idea to stick to one path and never deviate from it. There are some exceptions that maybe I'll talk a bit about later, but right now this is the general rule and you should for the most part stick with it, especially if you are newer playing the game, it is just a very safe thing to do. Sometimes there are better ways of doing it, but not on the first floor most likely. Alrighty then. Uh, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, right, uh, that's the situation where you start with less modules to start. For example, what if this room had no major module or this room had no major module? Well, if those two rooms have major modules, then you don't change your builder. First industry, then food. Then if you cannot find a major module, then that's too bad. You have to improvise because in such a situation, you will be fairly far behind. I'm sorry, you, it is unavoidable, but you'll still be able to gain a very nice income of industry and food because of your people leveling up fast. Now, if you have no major modules in either of those two, two rooms, then you are in for a hardcore experience because you will feel the pain, feel the pain. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. And the, the first thing you have to do after this, those two rooms, after you discover finally some kind of major module will be a food module and then you have to try and hold out and get your appeal to level 3 as quick as possible so basically again do not deviate from this build order but if you don't have major modules within two first uh, rooms you are possibly going to fail your playthrough it's as simple as that you can't pull this off but it will be very difficult so there is this. In general, there's no need to deviate from this build order. I have done many tests, as I said, and I think it's a very stable build order for you to go for. Alright, and sorry for the sniffing, but I do have my allergies problem. Now, what is happening? Two mobs spawned, and they will have to go through my doors, but there will be a lot of them as well. So what do I do? I'll create another prison prod in this room, and if we see that those mobs are coming through, I'll also create prison prods in this room as well. But what I need to do fairly badly is protect those rooms. So, thing is, there is actually... Alright, thing is, there is area of influence on mobs. So if you are passing through a room where there are mobs, your speed will decrease. This is why I made Max O'Kane stay in this room and fight off those initial two mobs, because I knew I can take them quite easily with my items and so on, but... And then what I wanted to do is just simply pull back to this room. But what happened is, I see now that there is... You can't see it because it's very difficult to see him, but there is a very hardcore hero hunter right here in this room. It is a mob, it's a necrophage mob, I don't remember its official name, that is designed to kill your heroes. It is going to ignore everything else and just hunt down your heroes. It is very fast and it has amazing damage and fairly a lot, of, a fairly big pool of health as well. In this situation, I have to run. Now, the problem with that is, I will more, almost certainly take some damage and maybe even enough damage for me to have to use food to heal up Max OK. This is why possibly I could have before opening this door level him up to level 2. Unfortunately, I was distracted. I was talking, explaining some other things, and didn't do so. But you should have leveled up Max OK by this point because you want to keep 30 35 ish food in your bank at all times. If you have more than that, and as you can see, I clearly do then you can level up your hero. And what do I mean more than that? It means that if I had, for example, 16 in the food, then I could still level up my hero because... Wait, no, I couldn't. If I had, for example, 30, uh, 30 food... Oh, let's make it more like... All right. If I had, like, uh, 21 food, then I would easily level up a hero because I knew that I would gain 14 food, which means that I would then be able to hire any other hero that I would meet in the next floor, in the next room. But... I didn't because I didn't notice that. So I need to pull back uh, to this room uh, and I'll possibly have to heal up uh, Max Okane. What I can do is to mitigate the damage that I have caused to myself is level him up right now. Now this will not actually give him bonus to HP. It will give him bonus to max HP 
It actually did increase his base HP as well by a little bit, but obviously he has taken some damage, so it is a little bit of a problem. And it's better to level up your heroes before you open doors, because you immediately gain bonuses from defense and whatnot. And right now, this defense did not come into effect for all this damage that I could have taken. So, the reason why I leveled up this hero is because now I have more damage, and I could, in theory, go for verbal abuse. This does increase my defense and increases my attack. I was wrong, it does not actually debuff the monsters. I'm sorry, sometimes I get a little bit confused. I may have to do this. I mean, it's not a crucial ability. If I will need to, then I can always restore it, and I will need to get it in order to save my hero. And the most important thing, as I said, is saving up your food. You do not want to use your food, so use this ability, activate it right away, and try to you know make sure that this hero does not, in fact, take any extra damage. Now, the good thing and the bad thing is that there are only those hero hunters that actually spawn in here. The good thing is, they are very easy to kind. The bad thing is, if I do it wrongly, then they all kill Max O'Kane okay fairly quickly, even if I do heal him up. So I'll try to pull back a little bit and see if I can kind those monsters efficiently. Now, as you can see, they stopped for a little while when they entered this room. So what I'm going to do is, as soon as they're entering this door, I'm going to make a beeline to this other room. Now, I failed. I have taken some damage that I shouldn't have. But if you do this correctly, you can actually not take any damage, as you can see, I was in this room for a while and I took no damage whatsoever from those mobs. So they can they are kiteable by Max O'Kane and you can do all this merry-go-round all day long and you will kill those monsters eventually with those prism prods. In fact, you can make it faster by creating another prism prod, but I want to save my industry so I'll not do that. So as you can see, we're just doing this merry-go-round chase and oh, I made a mistake, I took some damage and now I have to pay the price for it. I will have to heal up Max O'Kane because if I don't, it's very possible that I'll make another slip up and I'll take even more damage and as such I will possibly be dead. So what I do is I heal him up, yeah, that costs free food, which is bad but it's not the end of the world, and make a beeline to this room. This will cause those mobs to actually go through the entire length of this room, then as you can see not fast enough to catch up to Max O'Kane and they will take a lot of damage from my prison prods. So I'll continue doing like this and now I'll continue my merry go around like so and go back to this room. As you can see, it's a fairly easy way of dealing with those very, very powerful mobs because those Necro Drones, if you let them, as you can see, they can devastate your heroes very easily. Now, there's one problem that, uh, that unfortunately happened to us. You can barely see it, I'm afraid, in YouTube, but there is a very small blue bar above my major module, that's my food module. It indicates that it is basically one hit away from being destroyed, which is horrible and really bad. Because right now, I cannot really repair it. Max O'Kane does, however, gain the ability to level... Uh, the, does gain the ability to repair modules as he levels up. So I could do that, or I could save my food for the event I meet a new hero. And just risk losing this food module. It has already paid for its price, I would say, kinda-ish. But it would be still really bad losing it. So I'll try to level up my hero. I don't actually remember if I'll gain this ability fast enough. No, I will not. I forgot. I thought you gained... Right, that was my mistake. I thought you gained the repair ability faster. No, you do not. So I am not able to repair this module just yet. I will be able to after I level up Max O'Kane again. But unfortunately, I miscalculated it. I simply forgot when you gain what and how much does it cost. It happens to the best of us, I'm afraid. And as such, I wasted a lot of food and I will not even be able to save my food module. Either way, if you are in this kind of scenario and you can actually gain somebody that could repair your module, then what you can do instead, then you, then you have to decide what you want more. Do you want to be safe and secure? Then don't bother leveling up your heroes because it might be better to actually save up your food and uh, hire any hero you meet. However, on the other hand, you may decide that food is more important to you, so you then you level up your hero and repair module and risk not being able to hire a hero. Now, alternatively to what we did is level up our pivot, because when you level up our pivot enough, he will gain the repair ability as well. In fact, he already has it. What am I talking about? He starts with repair ability. Gee, I'm such a dummy right now. <laughs> so yeah, as I can see, he does start with repair ability. But the problem is, if I were to move him to this room, I would have to unassign him. And what happens then is, for 110, I gain no benefits of operating a major module at all, which will actually cause me to lose quite a bit of food. However, there are at least one, two, only two doors to open, but maybe there are entire two doors to open. So, in fact, what I should have done, 
so this was a mistake by me, I'm sorry for this in the tutorial, but I guess it happens, is I should have possibly moved a people to this room. Because of this, I yes, I would have lost 110 worth of extra food, but I would have made sure that this food replicator is safe and secure, and I would have also additional hero in this room, so it would be even less likely that I would take any more damage, and I wouldn't even have to do this merry-go-around chase, because I would have enough firepower with those two heroes in a single room to actually defend against even the more stuff of beasties. So there is this problem. Right now, however, I'm not going to do so because I need every bit of food I can get in the event I meet a new hero because of the mistake I did. Again, mistakes sometimes happen, everybody makes them, I make them, you make them, it's normal. So when you do make mistakes, you have to think how to can react them. Right now, I think that in my situation, after the mistake I did, it's best if I leave my hero right here. Uh, I mean, if I leave our people right there and just continue exploring. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, I'm hoping no mobs will spawn, but they will probably spawn even though it is earlier levels. So, yes, indeed, mobs did spawn. And what I'll try to do is make sure that they stay in this room. I'll even sacrifice a bit of my industry and defend this room with everything I've got to try and make sure that no mobs come into this room and try to snap my major module. Now, unfortunately, there is a hero hunter and there is a second one, which is problematic to say the least. But I didn't see any other mobs as of yet. There is one. He's not a very big problem though. And uh, let's make sure that Max is all okay. So let's go back. And those mobs will surely die now. They did. Now that's good. So what do we do now? It's, it's a fairly good situation because as you can see, we have defenses in this room. So what we want to do is power this room so that no mobs can spawn over here. If they did spawn here, and I opened door and there was mobs in this room as well. This would be horrible because I would be attacked from two sides. Now, in theory, you might say it's going to happen regardless, possibly, if mobs spawn over here. But the difference is, in this room, I already have turrets. So if mobs spawn in this room, then I can quickly deep out this room, power this room, and those turrets will already start walking on those monsters, which will be better than having monsters spawn in this room where there are no turrets. And making turrets in this room, obviously, is not very efficient at all. So, let's think, how much uh, food does my OP bot give to me right now? He gives me 5 food, which means that without him I would gain a bonus of f 9 food. The extra 9 food uh, would give me 30 food in the bank, which is enough to hire all heroes. I think it's all heroes, even the most expensive heroes are fairly certain costs 30 food at the start. So what I can do is move a people to this room, make him repair this food module so that it certainly stays alive for a little bit longer. And also, I'll still be able to operate and possibly hire a new hero. Now, this may be a little bit too late for this kind of fancy shenanigans because it is possible that this is the last door on this level. First floor is always very small. But in the event it is not, then it might be worthwhile to do this so I don't have to risk my hero's safety in order to protect this food replicator. So let's open the door. It was indeed not the last room, so this tells me the decision I made was the correct one. Let's go back to this room, and as you can see, I can now power this room, nothing is going to spawn in this room because things already spawned and they do not spawn again. And now everything that comes through this room is going to take some damage, which is nice. I also have both heroes in this room right now, so I will be able to reliably defend against anything that comes in. If necessary, I can activate our people's special ability, but I most likely don't have to. I was saying as my hero takes significant damage, because this hero is ranged, but unfortunately his range... Oh, he's actually melee? They changed that, didn't they? Oh, wow. Okay, he used to be ranged. Now apparently he's melee. Very strange, very strange. All right, let's move him back. If he takes too much damage, then I'll certainly heal him up, but it's okay. I may have to heal our people though, but I, as you can see, those mobs, yeah, they are very low on health, so I'll pro probably be able to heal to keep more, both of my heroes alive. And as you can see, this is exactly what happened. Now, unfortunately, I had to move my hero out. What is actually the bad idea I was, again, commentating makes me do dumb things. This is something that you should expect from every commentator out there, because things like that unfortunately do happen. So, what I did is I made our people leave the room so that he survived, right? That's bad, because right now it costs me 5 food that I'm not gaining because he was not walking this module for a while, which is horrible. However, if I instead healed him up, it costed, what, 3 or 4 food? That's less than 5 food, so I should have healed him up and then he would have been fine. What I did would have been okay if there were more powerful mobs in the room, but they were half dead anyway, so I didn't risk anything by healing him up and I would gain lose less as a result. So this is again a mistake I did, but 
I'm pointing it out, so I, I think it's okay. Alright, didn't it? Now, what I can do, possibly, and I'll show this to you just so that you are aware of this possibility, is again create a bunch of prison prods in this room so that if necessary, I'll be able to weaken any mobs that walk through this room into this room. Because right now I'm in a fairly bad situation. Mobs can spawn a lot for nearby rooms. I do not have a lot of dust to power nearby rooms of this room, and I'm in a fairly, you know, bad situation, and as such, I need to protect myself as best I can and right now if I need to I can choose if I want to power this room or this room and then plan accordingly. Reason why I'm to building those turrets now and not waiting for the mobs to spawn and then making a decision is because even though prison prods will be built fast, during a mob invasion they do take a while to be created and that's where things go a little bit dicey because you may not have them in time for when they are actually necessary. But as you can see nothing spawns on the right side, everything spawns on top, so let's go ahead and do the usual trick of defending this area. Now so far so okay, those mobs are not particularly scary and they should be able we should be able to kill them very very easily. Some more mobs coming, but again because they spawn far away, because of how we are powering and depowering our rooms, everything is good except Max O'Kane is again taking an unnecessary bit of damage, so we're going to back him off just to be uh, safe. Bigger same than sorry. And then we're going to continue like this. Usually with Max O'Kane you will have enough food to not have to do this kind of micromanagement I'm doing right now on the first floor. But I was fairly unlucky with the amount of dust I'm gaining so far, so this is some, what happens. And this is what you can expect if you didn't have Max O'Kane and if you had the Masochist here instead. This is more or less situation you would be... It would be more or less like this, right? But with this masochistic hero, you will be able to take any hero on floor 1 without any mob, I mean, on floor 1 without any problems because he's such a powerful bastard. Alright then. I will gain a lot of food so I can level up my heroes again. I can either level up Max O'Kane for his repairability. Repairability? No, 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 no. If I level him up, if I level him up, he will gain extra dust from rooms with dust. That's the ability I was talking about. Uh, or alternatively, I can level up OP bot for extra one wit, which is not entirely useful. So I level up okay, Max O'Kane, and this is the ability I was talking about. Right now, Max O'Kane gets extra two dust every time he opens a room with dust. So as you can see, as I said, if you had a masochistic hero up to this point, nothing would change really. But with Max O'Kane from now and forth, things will go much better. This will be especially easy to see on floor number two, where this extra dust I'm getting will be actually really, really quite crucial. And this is why Max O'Kane is just really just such a good hero. Alrighty then. Alternatively, alternatively, you cannot level up OP bot. But the thing is, he gains very little wit as he levels up. I'm pretty sure that after level 1, he gains maximum of plus 4 wit from his levels. Maybe plus 5, but I think I calculated it. And it was only extra 4 wit he gained. Which is not a lot considering the amount of food you have to sunk into him to gain this extra wit. Because those wood, uh, wood increments are very few and far between. So it's not a really good thing. Yes, wood does. It's kind of useful. Uh, if you remember right now, half of your wood goes into bonus to food industry or science when you're operating something. But still, that's not a lot. And after level 8 or 7, in my opinion, it's not worth it to level up a pivot. Alright then, either way, Max O'Kane is now much better, he's still fairly vulnerable, but with an A-Gun he can deal quite a decent amount of damage. So let's go ahead and open this door, see what awaits us, it's still not the end of this dungeon. For our first floor, it is actually a fairly big floor. Now mobs did spawn, and they are coming immediately, as you can see they did spawn in this room unfortunately. And one of those mobs is a mob, is a hero hunter. So what I'll do is first things first, get this item, what is it? It's Crouchy. That's very good, because Scratchy is an item for OP bot, and it's a very good item. It increases his speed, not too useful, but it also increases his attack power by 19. Considering the fact that his attack cooldown is 1, it's not actually a very big deal, it just gives him extra 19 DPS, but it's still 19 DPS extra, which is good. Now, because it would take a moment for Max O'Kane to actually make it to this room, I'll activate uh, OP bot's special ability, just to make sure that he is more likely to survive, because I certainly do not want to move him out of this room. Now, as you can see, He's taking a lot of damage, so I'm going to activate Max O'Kane's ability and I will also heal up a B-Bot. I will not have him move him out of this area because his dust deal increased damage right now and I want him to continuously deal his damage. So healing him up for full uh, food right now is still, it's still worth it because I would lose 5 if I were to move him out. And let's see how things are going. Right now mobs are 
having to choose between him and of uh, Max Okane, and things went really, really quite smoothly. And we gained the dust that we needed, and now we can actually power two rooms at once, which is much, much better. And I'm going to power up this room. Reason being is because I want to make sure that Max Okane, as he comes back, is not slowed down by too many mobs that could spawn between him and this room. Well, now, what I can do as well is a very nice little trick, again, by creating even more prison prods. For example, over here, I don't want to overdo this because I need to keep some industry for myself. But two prison prods in those rooms seems like not the worst idea ever, and I will go for it. Gladly. It's extra damage, weakening the mobs that can spawn, and that's something I will gladly do every day of the week because food is such an important resource. And industry is as well, don't get me wrong, but spending six industry to save yourself a lot of food is, in my book, a very good trade. And this is still not the end of the first floor, it's quite ridiculous, but it's still okay. And no mobs actually spawn, so we can just go ahead and continue and open yet another door. Do I want to level up my heroes? I do. Which one do I want to level up? Max Okane, I cannot even level up. And when I level up OP bot, then I'll, it will cost me a lot of food, so I'll not do this right now as well. And let's go ahead. And again, this is not the end. It's very rare that I see uh, rooms that are this loud. Now, what's happened? I get an extra dash from this room, but no more spawned yet. Now, yet is a very big, important part of the sentence I just said, yet. It's because it takes like two seconds or so for the mobs to spawn after you enter a new room. So what you can do right now, when you gain extra enough dust to pop another room, use this dust. How do you want to use it? Like so. And now there's no chance that any mobs will spawn in this room. Whereas if I didn't use it, if I didn't pause the game and use this dust, mobs can still spawn in this room because they are about, the spawn wave is about to start. So let's power up this room and see if anybody spawns. They did spawn, but they didn't spawn over here. Obviously, right now it's RNG. I cannot prove that this is the case, that it's because of my doing it that nobody spawned in here, but trust me, it is the case. Anyway, nobody spawned in the right side of the map, so we can power up this side. And again, a hero tracking mobs, but that's okay. Our people should handle it, especially because now I have another prison uniform for a bit of extra defense, which is nice. Let's go ahead and make my way over to this room. And go ahead and attack. Now, I can level up a P-Bot a little bit because I will have enough food to hire a new hero if I open the next door. And I will, in fact, do so. Just because it will give him a little bit more defense and possibly save me the dance that, uh, the food that I would need to spend on healing him up. So let's go ahead and heal him up and take the damage. And our P-Bot should be actually able to handle all of this by himself, even without the help of Max O'Kane, because there was only one hero hunting mob right here. So it's all good. Let's go ahead and rip out those two rooms, because again, I want Max O'Kane to have a relatively easy time getting back to this room, because remember, if mobs spawn in these rooms, those rooms, then Max O'Kane will be slowed down, and I might even have to heal him. Anyway, this is finally the last door of the current floor, and the mobs spawned, again, pausing the door, powering this room, making sure nothing spawns in here, and it's good, nothing spawned at all. So I'm just going to go back to this room, there's no point in staying there and fighting. And now I'm going to weaken the mobs that are going to come into my room as well, which is fairly good. And I should be able to deal a quite a special amount of damage as a direct result. Now, I guess the firing those rooms, I don't even need to watch the fight because it is going to work, uh, do work quite nice for me. And how do I want to do this? I want to move to Microsoft over here. What do I want to do? Make sure that there are no mobs in my way. Now, there, no matter what I do, mobs will come from this area. But I can make sure that if I pass this room, then I will have a clear way to the exit room. And I can do so by pairing this room. Now, this does mean that the mobs might spawn in this area, which is a little bit risky. But I would rather have the mobs spawn here, than here, and then slow me down as I make my way towards this crystal. Because keep in mind, the most important figure about mobs, they slow you down. So you want to avoid this if possible. Now, since we have to carry a crystal, we simply have a quick check at how fast those heroes are. And obi is actually the faster one, and as such, he's got to be the one that is going to carry our crystal. Whereas Max O'Kane is just going to stay in this room and try and defend. Now, because actually the difference in speed is not that big, I'm going to do it the other way around. And the reason being is that obi does have more defense. And the extra 4 defense might not seem like a lot, but it is actually a fairly big deal. He has less life though. Um, but this defense I actually value more. <laughs> So I do it like this, and people will go. Is going. Then again, you cannot activate your abilities when you are carrying your crystal. So I will keep Max O'Kane because I can activate his variable abuse. I'm sorry, I'm being so indecisive, but I want to make sure I do not make you 
make the wrong choices because of my brain dead moments. So let's go ahead and pick up the crystal, pause the game really quickly, click on the exit and on pause. And now we do not have to pause this game probably ever again. And of course mobs spawn in the room that I didn't want them to spawn in, but it's still okay because I have plenty of defenses in this room. So even though the mobs do spawn, I should be able to defend quite nasty. Some mobs spawn behind, my, uh, behind the OP bot, but it's still okay. And as you can see, they are very, very slowly making their way towards me. But it's still okay, nothing actually made it into the stream asset from the first wave as of yet, so I have nothing to worry about whatsoever. I can now turn back into this area and I won the first floor. Easy, isn't it? And I hope this video did help you a little bit and explained a few bases on how to deal with the early game. Now, the next uh, door starts. But I think this is good enough. This video is already very long. And if you do not like talking, then you probably hate me and stopped watching a long time ago. But if you somehow did manage to enjoy this video cast, then you know the deal. Comment away. Give me a some likes as well if you liked it enough, because it will help me. If you didn't like it enough, then just don't give me those likes. It's very simple. Now, because I promised, I'll tell you how to deal with the safe swapping, because it's something I've been using to record quite a lot and to test things as well. So to do this, it's, it's very simple. You go into your Steam library, you right click on Dungeon of the Endless, you go to Properties, you go into whatever it's called, that Steam Cloud, and you disable it. After you do that, you copy your, you go into your uh, Documents folder, which you know where it is, I assume, and you find the folder named Dungeon of the Endless. You copy it, or rather cut it out, out and copy it into your desktop or anywhere else so that you do not lose your progress. And then you start your game and you have a fresh new save file created for you. A tutorial and the agree button and everything will be re-enabled of course, but you have a brand new save file. And when you want to switch, very simple. Go back to your documents, delete Dungeon of the Endless and paste your original uh, Dungeon of the Endless folder back into your documents. And la -di -da, you have your old progress back. Which is very nice. You have to do this with Steam, sa with Steam Cloud save off, however, keep that in mind. And also keep in mind also, progress does not transfer between two things. So if you uh, unlock a hero in one of those two runs you are playing, this hero obviously will not be available in this other run that you are playing. So you shouldn't actually have too much use of this unless you want to just start a new or a recording or anything along those lines. But it is a nifty little trick I thought I would teach you, regardless. And that's it! Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video cast, and you know what to do if you did. It was Panchos, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer, and I'll see you online.